The following is a special presentation of NCC TV brought to you by Newcastle County Government, Thomas B. Gordon, County Executive. Welcome to NCC TV. This is Tony Prado, Director of Communications for Newcastle County Government, and we were recently on location at Glasgow Park on a late October sunny day when County Executive Tom Gordon, County Council President Chris Bullock, and County Councilman David Tackett were on hand for the Department of Special Services project to stock the pond in Glasgow with different varieties of fish. Special Services brought in Delmarva Aquatics based in Smyrna to stock the pond with 650 fish, including largemouth bass, bluegill, and channel catfish. Delmarva Aquatics said a specific number of predator, prey, and bottom feeder fish were selected for the right balance. Councilman Tackett wanted the fish stocked so that people who frequent the very popular Glasgow Park could have the option to participate in a catch and release program. Let's watch as the Marble Aquatics stocks the Glasgow got Park Pond. Yeah, I got it. All right. Bend the knees, slap it in the water. Why somebody? I got a game. It's a big one. Give it a shake and they'll fall off. Oh, there you go. That was good. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Gentle touch. Yeah, they are separated. They don't Yeah, you don't want them to end up. You don't want them to. Uh, Beat up the larger fish. They get inside it. These two, these are nice. This is a nice photo. Okay. How about that? Why don't you grab it by here? No. There you go. First part of the camera a little bit. Camera. They gotta hit the water. <laughs> <laughs> and it's that. <laughs> <laughs> County Executive Tom Gordon, County Council President Chris Bullock. And Councilman David Tackett took some time to speak with us about the stocking of fish at Glasgow Park Spot. Oh, this is a wonderful area down here. It's just jam packed. This pond here was developed uh, probably about two years ago. It's been online. Uh, I've been talking to the county executive about like, trying to get it stocked. That uh, whenever I go out to my community meetings, everybody's always asking about sitting around this beautiful area and just fishing here and relaxing. So we took that concept out. Um, actually, put it on social media. Did a little survey and everybody was overwhelmingly in favor of it and as we brought the budgets forward and looked at this we worked closely with uh, council president bullock here and we've approved it and uh and we owe a lot of thanks well we owe a lot of thanks to the people I, I i know there was an article recently in the paper and it talked about this park and the one gentleman that was in there was quoted to say what did we ever do in that area without that park i mean that's a prime quote we just need that like on the header of our county website there or something that is so sure. true what, 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 Chris, have you been doing here? Well, you know, I, I always enjoy coming down here in this district. You know, I want to be in your leadership and uh, kind of exec as well. It's been a meeting point for all types of people, residents in our county, to come and relax. And now they can fish, which is a big deal. And to know that this farm is stocked with this quality of fish, it just makes it more attractive uh, for the residents out here. Uh, and also, it's an opportunity for kids from the city to come out here mm -hmm. and learn how to fish and enjoy all this wonderful weather. So I commend your leadership. Of course, our county executive vision make this one of the best parks in the region. Yeah, we're talking about 300 acres of fun and sun. Right down here in the area where 120 of our great citizens live. So come on down as we continue to expand this beautiful park. For, for this council's vision, vision of where to go from here. All the support the council gave us, I thank them all. And now it's up to the citizens to make use, so we're going to keep expanding. Thank you. It's only going to get better as we continue to improve this park. Probably in about two weeks, look for a little of notice. We'll put it on social media, maybe even do a press release out here. We'll have a nice little soft opening of the uh, fishing out here. This will be a catch and release pond. We hope to keep it stocked and enjoyable for years to come. And then in the springtime, we're going to hope to have a really nice event out here, a nice family fishing day. And that'll, that, all those details will be soon to come. Come and fish with Newcastle County.
means catch and release. So if you're going to sneak it out, you got to let nobody see it. It's a great fish. <laughs> Let's now hear from Delmarva Aquatics owner Skip Basin. All right, uh, we are here with the fish farmer that raised uh, the fish that we saw being stocked into the Glasgow Park ponds. Uh, can you introduce yourselves for our audience? Okay. My name is Skip Basin. Uh, the other two gentlemen, the tall one is Mark, and uh, the other big one was Andrew. <laughs> they work with me, own fish and other things. Uh, We've been doing it for about, well, I've been doing it for about 35 years. Now, we, you just stocked the Glasgow Park Pond with 650 fish. That included uh, 300 channel catfish. The rest were a combination of bluegill and uh, largemouth large bass. Largemouth uh, bass. So uh, tell us about, uh, you know, the fish that were stocked here and why they're good for this particular pond in this temperate region. Well, for one thing, they, they take low temperatures very well, and they take high temperatures very well. Their, their normal habitat would be in a pond like this or a very slow moving river. And uh, catfish grow fast and hard. And oh, yeah? bass are obviously a very important game fish from virtually everywhere in the United States. Uh, the bass we put in here are uh, in their second year of growth. They've been, they've been fed very heavily in our system, so they grow fast. The bluegill are between this spring fish and last spring fish. They're up to two years old. And the bluegill is especially good for little kids to catch. They're willing to bite, and little kids can catch them and have a good time. Speaking of uh, catching, Councilman Tackett mentioned that in a couple weeks, maybe mid-November, we're looking to have a soft opening where people can start the catch and release program here. Mm -hmm. Is that enough time for the fish to get used to their new home and, and, and endure that kind of uh, that, that Yeah, they'll, they'll be perfectly acclimated to, to here by then. The only problem you may have is if it gets cold enough, they may not want to bite very well. Yeah, when it gets cold, they don't bite very well. But uh, if you got patience, you can catch them. Now, speaking of that, what you're referring to is the fact that as it gets colder, they tend to get dormant, and so people wondering how they're going to survive through the winter. They're going to be just fine. They're just not going to be very active. Correct. Right. The uh, it's kind of interesting. The catfish actually will get into a great big ball. We might have two of them, but virtually all the catfish in the pond will be in one or two groups, and it might be three or four or five feet in diameter. They'll all just stay in that ball all winter. Uh, and uh, the bass, they spread out, but they usually go to the deeper water in the pond where it's a little bit warmer. Yeah. Same thing with the bluegill. They, uh, they'll get along quite well. Some of the bluegill may have been small enough that bigger bass could catch them and eat them, but pretty much these are <laughs> sized so that they won't eat each other immediately. Okay. That, that was one of the things we, we tried to make sure we had it so that you wouldn't have that problem. You don't want your bass to eat all your bluegill in a couple of weeks. But before I forget, where is your fish farm uh, located? My my, uh, my farm is located in Smyrna. Uh, yeah. The Marble Aquatics. Yeah. Yes. And uh, like I said our main our main product actually is striped bass and hybrid striped bass. Uh, we catch the both striped bass in the river, breed them, grow them up in ponds, and then basically we give some to the state and we sell them to fish farmers to go to Acme and be able to buy them. Lastly, uh, is this when do you think the next time we'll have to restock the pond, or will it be necessary? I mean, well, it, fish pro it probably reproduce. won't be necessary for the bluegill, okay. but it will probably be advantageous to occasionally add more bass, and you will know whether you need them based on whether you see small bass and large bass and in the media. Uh, typically what happens in the place of people fish, even if they don't remove the fish, is that they will tend to kill the larger fish. Because mm. they'll set hooks on them and you know, they have to fight them underground when they're trying to get hooked out and everything like that. Yeah, it tends yeah. to kill the bigger fish. Uh, but these fish are, I don't believe you have to do much of anything for five years unless you have a kill. And uh, yeast cause problems for these fish in the winter. The manure in the pond tends to suck up all the air. Right. Why would you get air with it? Yeah, that's why. Those going should be all right. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for partnering uh, with Newcastle County. We really no appreciate it. Good job today. Yes, well, it was a good time.